This introductory presentation for Module 4 will focus on the key and overarching concept of Renaissance humanism. Our three identifiable writers, Dante, Petrarch, and Boccaccio, all fit squarely within this emerging intellectual tradition, and each can justifiably claim the status as the true father of this revolutionary belief system, which itself signaled the beginning of the end of what we think of as the medieval world. A fourth writer, the anonymous and so named Pearl Poet, comes a bit later but also fits in with fits within this era of transitional and revolutionary literature. As you make your way through this presentation, please consider how the course themes, and indeed even your own interest in literary studies generally, follows within this tradition. Most of the material for this presentation is drawn from Mark Cartwright's wonderful World History Encyclopedia webpage that is titled appropriately enough, Renaissance Humanism. Here we see his account of how Dante, Petrarch, and Boccaccio each hearken back to the classical world, a point particularly evident in Dante's portrayal of Virgil as his guide to his catabasis, or underworld journey, which itself is a repurposed classical motif in his Inferno, the first of the three books that comprise his Divine Comedy. Petrarch and Boccaccio were also both renowned writers and enthusiastic antiquarians, also known for combing through the holdings of old libraries to gain access to classical sources and ancient bodies of knowledge. This and the following slides offer plenty of relevant information, so please take care to pause and review as needed. As explained here, humanism's first characteristic is its insistence on recovering ancient resources and adapting them to contemporary times. Emerging out of the study of ancient literature, this belief system and cultural movement also stressed civic engagement and the concept we refer today we refer today as self-actualization. The study of ancient literature, the humanist believed, enabled the cultivation of individual thought and the refinement of the individual's identity towards its fullest potential. It opposed some of the existing and rigid doctrines of the medi of medieval Christianity as it existed at the time but was flexible enough to accommodate itself to reimagine forms of Christian practice. To this end, we see in the term Renaissance the profound sense of rebirth, a recalling and an updating of ancient ideas for modern times. The term humanism actually dates to the 19th century and was developed to identify and understand the intellectual shifts signaled in the works of Dante, Petrarch, Boccaccio, and others. Through the study of ancient literature and language, languages, the humanists believed, individuals were guided towards refined thinking in philosophy, history, law, medicine, theology, and other disciplines. We might also find in the development of humanism the gradual adopting of Christian faith practices into specialized denominations, first within the Catholic Church itself, but also later into the various forms of Protestantism. Many of you have already taken note of the radical and eternally troubling character of the literature of the classics, which held on to their forbidden reputation within the medieval church. Even so, the humanists prized the dynamic and radical character of these ancient stories and likewise found the philosophies and rhetorical theories of the ancients to be equally engaging, a refreshing alternative to the increasingly outdated beliefs, doctrines, and past practices of the tradition-bound church. In these secular sources, Renaissance humanists identified the foundations for new forms of understanding virtues like rhetorical eloquence, political engagement, 
personal fulfillment, self-cultivation, and newly conceived ways of understanding and engaging with the world. Please take a moment to pause and review this slide for a fuller explanation of these humanist characteristics. Finally, in a presentation full of descriptions and definitions, here's a convenient summation to end this introduction. Please take a moment to review this information, and for now I'll thank you once again for your attention and offer the hope that you enjoy your exposure to the selections from our humanist writers. Thank you for listening.